Hello, today I'll be talking to Greg Lounsbury. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, evening where I am. Today's going to be slightly different. I did hint upon this uh, a few weeks ago and a few videos ago, but today I managed to get some time uh, to talk to Greg Lounsbury. You may or may not know who Greg Lounsbury is or who what Lounsbury pedals are. Here are some here, for example. Um, what Greg does, he makes uh, high-quality boutique effects pedals, uh, particularly the one that takes everybody by storm over over in this side of the pond is the the organ grinder. It's a really quite uh, it can be quite a dirty uh, sounding gritty effects pedal, but also when you when you when you back off. It, it cleans up in a way that some other pedals uh, don't, or some other um, effects don't. And uh, I've really been intrigued by uh, the man and, and the company for quite some time. And I was very pleased when he, uh, he agreed to have five, ten minutes with me, as it turned out about half an hour, uh, chatting about uh, music in general and all things uh, circuitry, some of which uh, went over my head, some of which I managed to catch as it was passing by. But I thought it'd be really good to... Uh, have a chat with Greg and for you to have uh, a watch and a listen, see what you think. And uh, I'll be back at the end for a bit more waffle. That. That's my keep my head warm hat. Here we go. I know Just that feeling. Yeah. I know that feeling. It's um, it's minus five here. It's the it's pretty cold for England. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> yeah. we're we're not so bad. We had a, a an ice storm that came through and a lot oh. of rain, which actually brought the temperature up. We were in the twenties. Which it'll be back oh. there soon. Twenty is fair night, you know. But, but that's, uh, yes, my uh, yes, yeah, quite low, isn't it? Minus is it minus yeah. thirty? Minus thirty two is zero, I think, for centigrade, isn't it? I think so. Quite low. Yeah, it's zero for you. It's it's thirty two for us. Plus thirty two for us is is uh, is freezing here. I and so never understood. Yeah. Never. Yeah, sorry. I was just saying, I never understood how the the English uh, did imperial, but did centigrade. They did all the. We're the, then... we're the only ones that use the English system. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> all of the uh, all of our measurements are English. <laughs> and we, and we, well, we no, we were well. We got a bit of European, but apparently we don't <laughs> like to be in Europe anymore. So, uh, keep the politics out. Anyway, so so uh, welcome. It's great to finally talk to you, having been uh, a user, user of your uh, products. As you can see, I've got a few of them just laid out for you there. And um, whilst I was uh, waiting for you to come online, I checked out the new line out I've got on my C three, which I haven't. I've only recently had. And I've got to say, I was amazed how good that sounded. Because a lot, lot of the time, when you when you get um, pedals that are meant for minus twenty, and you put something really powerful through it, they just burn it out and kill it. Certainly on this one, that, that sounds amazing. So I might start recording with that as well. So what is what is your uh, line level out? Is it uh, zero or plus ten or minus ten? Well, what I've, what I've done with this one is I think it was measured as plus six. When it went when we okay. tested it, That's kind and of it, it is yeah. And so at one point I, I put a loop in um, uh, with my electrician because she's far better than me at the technical stuff, and uh, it's good to stay alive, isn't it? When you've got these things, and okay. uh, and I I just kept burning things out. Everything everything would just turn into an overdrive pedal, you know, <laughs> even if it's a reverb or something. There's there's um, a way you can there's a way you can deal with that. You can. Uh, uh, you can attenuate that with just a couple of resistors, and your electrician may or may not to... know how to do that. But um... yeah, I used to have um, I used to have a little flat attenuator pedal. Yeah, and just kind of wind it wind it down, get it through, and then back up again. Right. But um, more recently, we've gone native with it now, so it's it's all back onto the one two two. And right now, you're hearing your pedal through the um, Leslie thirty three hundred in the background. Nice. It sounds fantastic. So, so I mean, how did you get how did you get started? Because we, over over here in England, we we just a couple of people started talking about an effects pedal, and then we chatted and we checked it out, and it's it's a monster. But where did you come from? It's it's a uh, it's an interesting story, and uh, you know, I think before I came along, almost nobody was using pedals with with organs or with keyboards, you know, and uh, yeah. So, I. Um, I started to make a guitar pedal called the Nigel and mm. uh, which I think is a great pedal. It, it kind of sounds uh, like a Marshall Plexi. It's yeah. a really nice pedal. 
you know. Was, and so um, I I bought an old L100 organ just to mess around with in the studio. And I just thought, thought it yeah. sounded a little thin. I said, you know what? I'd, I'd like some overdrive, you know. Not, and I can't play, but I was, you know, messing around with some Uriah Heap licks. I say, okay, yeah. well, this doesn't sound like Uriah Heap, you know. So no. I got to do something there, you know. And so um, I came up with this little circuit. It was, uh, and I made some observations about about the organ and its spectral content and power as compared to a guitar. And I yeah. said, the things that you would, if you put a guitar pedal on the organ, it's not going to sound good. And because yeah. of things like the energy level, uh, your average power levels and everything, because of all of these different partials that are involved in an organ tone, mm. uh, whereas a guitar is kind of more sinusoidal, you know? And uh, so... Um, so I came up with this little circuit, which I thought sounded pretty good. It wasn't quite the organ grinder, but it was the first step on the way to the organ grinder. And right. uh, so I was doing some, some radio interviews for uh, the Canvas Prague Hour. And one of the interviews I did was with Roger Powell. And we got discussing this wow. a little bit. And I said, well, here, let me send you one of these things, you know. And so I sent it to him, and he really liked it. But he wanted to change, you know, some levels, and we tweaked around, went back and forth a little bit, and then that's where the yeah. organ grinder came from. And so at that point, it kind of sat around for a little bit until I sent one to Jim Alfredson for review. But once Jim Alfredson, you know, blogged about it, that was it. It took off. You know. Well, and then the tall and fat, I I sent an organ grinder to John Van Tongren out in L.A. He's a film composer. And he said, you know, it's almost good enough for jazz. And I said, well, I didn't make it for jazz. Um, oh, I was, just, I was just saying, I've actually got a tall and fat here. Actually, and I was amazed at how good that is. Having, if you want to, if you want to explain what it is you're trying to recreate with that. Right. And so, um, well, uh, JVT wanted something that he thought was, you know, would give you the fatness of a tube and the sound of an AO28 preamp without all of the overdrive you would get from uh, the organ grinder. And I said, yeah. well, you know, I didn't really design this for jazz, but yeah, let's, let's take a run at it. And so I changed, you know, the architecture and the gain staging. And um, so it came up with, uh, with the tall and fat. And one of the th one of the things about the tall and fat is, you know, what I ended up arriving at was something that I've never been able to find for purchase anywhere. I've, over the years, you want to buy something that sounds like a tube, but doesn't sound like, you know, crunch or, or hard distortion, you know. And yeah. uh, so the tone of fat has this wide sweet spot where you start to get into that tube saturation sound. But it's yeah. a long time yeah. before you get into a crunch sound. You have this very wide range of how That's much right. tube saturation do you want. And then over here, way, you know, when you when you peg it, you can it'll start to crunch out a little bit. But um yeah. What it does, it, it does a really a wonderful job of, you know, making uh, a digital organ sound more like it has a tube preamp in it, you know. And you know what? I got it. I've got a Hammond XK5 uh, in the bag down there, and I, I got it next to the uh, C3. And the, the difference, it's, it's ever so interesting because it's quite subtle, but it's really, it's really pronounced. That sounds like a contradiction in terms, in a way. Uh, but it really it absolutely does make it sound like the, the uh, preamp. It's, it's a bizarre piece of circuitry. And I like the fact you've just got a, a tall knob and a fat knob. I just think that's fantastic. You know? <laughs> and you have, and you know what? The interesting thing is you, uh, in some of the, er, some of the early testers of this said, well, I can't see where it's really doing anything. And then they turn it off and says, Oh no, wait a minute. What happens right. is you, you listen to it for a while and you don't notice there's a whole lot going on until you turn it off. And then yeah. your ears are craving it after that. It's like, Oh yeah. no, 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 it's, no. It's, I got to turn that back on. You know? <laughs> it's the absence, it's the absence of it because I yeah. was, I was considered, has it, does it share any circuitry with the organ grinder at all? Because I wasn't, because I had them both in line and I thought, should I have both or should I have just the one? It shares some one stage is similar, but even then the gain right. staging is different. And I mean, it has a similar architecture, um, right. but I would say even that stage, the gain staging is different. So it's, it's not that similar. I mean, it uses a lot, it uses the same technology, I'll put it that way. Um, because... Using them both together is a good idea um, because, you know, you use the, the tall and fat to get that uh, saturation sound. 
And then uh, sometimes you want, you know, you want that organ grinder crunch and sometimes you don't. So you, you bring that in yeah. and, you know, and out at will, you know. Now, yeah. one of the interesting things is uh, nectar. Uh, Kendall Scott with nectar, he puts his organ grinder first. Oh. Now, most people put the tall and fat first. Putting yeah. the organ grinder first is kind of an interesting thing. I, I, I think I like the, the sound of that a little better. Well, I shall try, I shall try that because you tend to yeah. put the, the overdrive at the end, don't you? Yeah. So that, that's where... I'll I'll give that a go, yeah. I mean, because I, I did put them together, and my my roadie is all about ca carrying less equipment. So whenever mm -hmm. he sees another thing, he's like, "What what have you got that for? Do you need it?" You know, I go, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, I need it." But but with like with me, I'm to a board. <laughs> <clears throat> exactly, exactly. But with me, I um I don't switch it off. I don't switch the organ, organ grinder off in anything that I do. You uh, don't I might... need to if you know if if you if you work that that control, you know you you don't don't necessarily need to it just depends on on uh if you're looking for that pristine clean jazz organ sound or not you know yeah yeah i, I think yeah. so I, i'll modulate the the overdrive a fair bit so if i'm doing right. um soul stuff i've actually got it uh tall is the the, the volume and the fat is the overdrive isn't it? Got it right so so i actually yeah. have it like like three o'clock nine o'clock so i've got it's a lot of push but yeah. not a lot of overdrive but tall and, then... and fat is one that most people never turn off um, no why would you yeah, why would you yeah. Why would you? Right. It just sounds good. I mean, you know, it sounds like an advert for uh, for organ grinders at the moment. <laughs> it's not meant to be. It's just I've done I've done quite a few videos with stuff because um, I'm that guy that used to go into the um, music shop with into the guitar section with an organ, you know, and and say right, what what pedals have you got? And they'd all look at me like like the fool I was. And the best one I used um, up until until overdrive circuits came into clones was an old Aria OD1. I've still got it somewhere, the, old, the black overdrive. And uh, I used that with clone wheels. I've got got the old clone, which is in the background there, that was a Yamaha clone wheel. That, I was just about to see it, the SK, yeah. SK20 there, from the 80s, back from the 80s. And um, I got a really passable tone out of it, but I know what you're saying because it doesn't react the same way. It makes it sound like a guitar. It flattens it in a really sort of, takes a dimension yeah. out of the thing. The other what thing I was... that happens uh, a lot with guitar pedals is they roll off the highs and the lows, and then the, and then there's a mid range hump, you know. So yes. they're, they're, it's kind of tailored, you know, for the frequency response of guitar. These pedals are yeah. are hi fi; they're, they're full full frequency range. Yeah, absolutely. And I noticed that. And there's a there's a, there's a bit in your uh, advertising blurb about the second uh, harmonic frequency, is it? Second harmonic frequency, and I, I won't pretend I know what that is, but I can hear it. You know, I could, I could definitely hear the difference between it. Yeah, and what, what, and what, what exactly is that? So, um, an organ, you know, obviously uh, synthesizes harmonics. You know, in the use of the tone wheels, and that's what the tone wheels are doing is they're bringing in yeah. different harmonics. Um, and so, what happens when things distort is most distortions will will break into what's known as odd order harmonics. Odd order harmonics they sound nasty and they tend to not they're not mm. sweet or smooth okay the even order harmonics yeah. are where you get the sweetness and a good example of an instrument with a lot of even order harmonics would be like a stradivarius uh right. a less yeah. ball you know so yeah, even order that. harmonics and when, when you think of a sweet tone and so um you get you know when when you play a, for example if you played a sine wave into this you'd get back more than one frequency because it's distorting. But the yeah, fact that yeah. it's distorting with even order harmonics means that you're going to get a sweet, a sweeter tone. So it's an enhanced sweetness. Oh, right. If you That's put it through, you know, uh, something that had a lot of odd order harmonics, then it would be a little bit on the nasty side and, and kind of gritty. Yeah, I, I get it. I was, you, you were talking about the Nigel, actually. I, I, I play one of the bands I play in is a Deep Purple tribute. And I do an A B into a little fifty watt Marshall, which is sort of hiding down there mm -hmm. somewhere. There he is down there, that little fella. Um, I'm interested. You make me interested in the Nigel now. Would that work? Would that work on a on a clone wheel and give you that like a a, a plexi tone, or is it is it more set up for guitar? There, there's a guy out in L A who uh, uses his Nigel. I think 
uh, okay. a keyboard player, but I think he uses it mainly for synth. But uh, I haven't really run well, an organ through one, but it's certainly something you should try, you know. Well, I'll definitely, I'll definitely try it. It saves me, yeah. again, if I can, less equipment I can carry around, you know, I can, it's, it's always you know, better. Yeah, if it, if it allows you to uh, not have to carry that box around, it'd be helpful. Exactly. Oh, that, well, that one doesn't, doesn't go out the very The guy that, that I uh, worked on the Tall of Fat with, you know, who, on my beta tester, JBT, uh, yeah. was carrying around a, uh, uh, a speakeasy, which I don't know if you're familiar with. It's a I big, yeah. big box. And uh, well, he was really pleased when we got the, the tunnel fat dialed in. He says, man, I don't have to haul that speakeasy around anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's absolutely right, isn't it? So, you, know, you, he... might, you might find the same thing with a Nigel pedal, you know. I'll give that a go. I'll give that a go. It's, it's just a little bit more control and it's a little bit less for the, the sound guy to, to, to worry about and get wrong when you've got microphones up there and all that kind of stuff, isn't it? Right. So, yeah, I mean, um, when you when when you hear a Hammond and and your pedals, how do you? What's the sound that you that you really like from it? Okay, well, an interesting side note: I, my mom was a jazz organist, and I used to call her the oh, Keith yeah. Emerson of nerd music. She would play all right. this big band stuff, but her own arrangements, and she had the Keith Emerson uh, dexterity. She she was an wow. amazing, and she wasn't a professional musician. She was a, an ex music teacher and a music grad from you know from college, and yeah. in the insurance business. And she had a, a Hammond in the living room. So I grew up listening to the Hammond organ, and uh, I, I'm a guitar player myself. But I really years and years and years of hearing what one's supposed to sound like, and uh, yeah. And so when I started hearing uh, these clone wheels and stuff, it was like. Oh, that doesn't really sound that much like it, you know. And for a while yeah. in the '80s, everybody was using an organ patch on their synth. Yeah. So when when the clone wheel started coming out, it was better, but it still didn't sound like a Hammond to me. <laughs> you know? No, it's right. They're so, all distorted, overdriven a little bit, aren't they? Yeah. And so you know, I just feel like I have a really good sense of what they're supposed to sound like, and that's kind of where a lot of this, what drove a lot of this, you know, starts with yeah. it. it. Starts with the ear, right? Yeah. You know. So, so if you've got the if you've got the skill to um, develop the circuitry, but you you can also hear what you want to do. Um, yeah, and I started that, experimenting that's... with the FET devices, and I found that I, I I got a sense for the character of the device and how oh. I can manipulate that character to get what I wanted in terms of sound, and that's kind of what where this all took off, you know. That's 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 amazing. Um, I'm really I'm really pleased to be able to talk to you. It's it's something I wanted to do for quite a while, but we've not really had the. The opportunity. Um, I'm going. I will do a little bit of an advert for you because I've also got. Um, I've got a nice little electric piano down here. See that uh, little the, nice. the Rhodes piano yeah, there. I see that. And I have to. I have to say that saves me a lot of bother. Uh, I'm as, you know, because I'll put. I'll either put it straight into the Marshall or I'll put it into uh, Logic or something like that. And then you start building up all the patches and the reverbs and all the all that noise starts to build up with all the plugins and that. And you end up with this. Um, a gate on a load of hiss mm -hmm. and uh, and that that actually was really good do you know it works really well on um like moog sounds as well yeah moog and uh like uh, with for example with spox with spox beard keyboardist ryo akamoto he yeah. uh, uses the organ grinder on his organ but he uses tall and fat on his moog that's really interesting isn't it for that. i don't know it's, it's it's witchcraft i don't know how you get that tubey sound and that there's a thing I say about tube and that some people get and some people don't. It kind of bends when you hit it. You know, it's not not a wall of of noise, and you manage to get that without the without tube. Yeah, and a good example, for example, with the uh, with the organ grinder, if you're using your pedal, you know, you know, you get it cleans up when you back up on the pedal, and it and it gets oh, gnarly yeah. when you lay into it. A lot of guitar effects don't do that when you use the pedal. A lot of them just kind of yeah. distort all the time. Yeah, so that, that's true. Not... And on the XK5 overdrive, um, you can actually set where you want it, where the overdrive to get, where you want it to sit before or after the, the volume pedal. Um, but I can't imagine why you'd want to back right off and still have it burning really, really hard. It's just not natural, is it? It's not natural sound. I think if you if you came to the instrument not being an organist and you're just looking at a sound and I want it to sound this way and I just want it to get not loud. And so you didn't, you're not using the technique that an organist would use. Yeah, uh, an organist, yeah, yeah. basically that, that drive level and that change is all part of that pedal technique and you work it, you know, and that's part of your, part of your performance. 
But I think somebody yeah. who just is a keyboard player who wants an organ sound might not get that point, you know. Yeah, I think that's that's a good point. I've I've always been organ. I was never a piano player. I'm the I'm the other way around. And most people come from either piano or classical or training, and I'm the ignorant guy who's, who's never. I can I can I can see what a note does, but don't ask me to sight read it. You know, I know what it is. But I've always come from that side of things. And and although it doesn't get me a lot of session work, the session work it does get me is the stuff that people want me for. And I'll, you know, I'll take that because um, there's yeah. a couple coming out at the minute. I'll tell you about in the, in the future. But when they come out, you'll be amazed they they didn't use the other keyboard player. I certainly was. <laughs> put, put it that way. So <laughs> very pleased to. Great, so man. what 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 kind of what kind of music are you into then? I I like prog rock, <laughs> progressive rock. Me too. That's, you know. Um, Me too. I'm a huge Jethro Tull fan. I am. Yeah. I can't, I can't get out of it. And they stopped using Hammond in 1979, sadly. Yeah, and that was really their heyday, you know, the, the uh, back oh, in yeah. those days, the uh, like Thick as a Brick, for example. I think the Hammond work on Thick as a Brick to me is some of my favorite, you know. It's, a, you know, quite early on in, in the song, there's an there's a, there's a organ solo that goes right up to that high C. And, the, and he, as he brings it up, it's on a fourth. So it's like a... Like that, and he puts the he puts the Leslie on, and it makes my hair. I don't know why, oh, yeah. but it makes my hair stand on end. Yeah, and there's just something just so unique. If you listen to every other organ album out there, you're not going to hear that. It is so. It's yeah. it's just a thing unto itself. It's really cool. Yeah, it is, and and I I often I often say so. I'm sure over this series of interviews, I'll be repeating myself. But what you what you do in the day, and what you have for tea, and how it sounds on stage affects all these little draw bars here, and you change and you, and it makes it as close to an organic instrument, as close to a guitar as you can you can be. I think, even though yeah. that's an on off switch essentially. And that's a you know gets gets back to working the pedals and that kind of thing. Although uh, you do have multiple oh. contacts on a key and they do engage at yeah. different times, and yes. some of these you know you can there are some subtleties you can get by by you know not it's fully engaging true. the key. You know, and yeah, that's very know, true. I don't have to tell you this. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you're, you're right. The C three and then it was the XK Hammond XK five was the first that brought the multiple contacts back out right. again, and and you know you you can you can hear them if you do it. Yeah. I don't know if you that comes across. Engage as you deepen uh, the press, yeah. Yeah, uh, um, I don't know if it makes me play any better or worse on the XK, if I'm honest with you. But you can, you can, you can do that. I think maybe I'm a bit too much of a. Thug. Well, the nice thing is to be able to translate your technique over to that instrument, and uh, that's yes, yeah. And so you know, one of the cool. earliest things with the tall and fat was uh, the B3 players who do the occasional gig with a clone wheel and. Uh, the tall and fat would enable them to get their pedal technique to work like it was supposed to, and that kind of thing. You know, oh, that's a good point. That's yeah. a good point. So, so what what are you working on now? I mean, I mean, last time we spoke, you had a couple of things in the pipeline. I think some of them are coming out or have come out now, haven't they? Yeah. So the Mo bass pedal is out, and that's uh, the bass pedal that I've developed with uh, Mo Moore of Nectar. I told you I like prog rock, and uh, so the Mo bass pedal is kind of an interesting. Uh, amalgamation of tall and fat and organ grinder it kind of morphs from on the drive control it kind of morphs from a tall and fat sound into an organ grinder sound as you push it harder so oh, you can find really that cool. you can find a balance where you're getting kind of both and uh, so i've you know something i was playing around with with you can see the rick over my shoulder and yeah. i was you know, trying to get the nice growly Rick sound, but I still wanted a warm buttery bottom end and I wanted to get both sounds at once, you know. Oh, that's and fantastic. So, I, I love your pa I love your passion for it, you know, and trying to get and, and working to get it. Because I mean these um the organ grinder comes in a couple of different variants, doesn't it? I think I, I know of about three, well two and a half, because you did something for me, didn't you? Yeah, look the special one I did for you, so I did a thing with Daniel Fisher at Sweetwater. He, I, he wanted a kind of a special version. And so um, as I was developing the stereo, one of the things he wanted was stereo. And so I came up right. with a gear grinder, and it basically had all of his circuit mods in it. Uh, right. One of the ones that I sent you was a mono version of that. I think you asked for that. Um, yeah, that's right. And um, so 
I've played around with that. I've kind of withheld the release of it because I sent a few of them out. And in some cases, I had some people not really like it, you know. And oh, so okay. Daniel Fisher loves it. That's, that's his sound. And yeah, uh, but I'm not thinking that one's, you know, a mass market oh. item. So what I've done with yeah. that particular design is I've reverted to the to the traditional organ grinder circuit only in stereo. So it has a couple right. of things. This one's getting ready to come out. Uh, right. And so it, it has a couple of things that it does. Uh, number one is um, if you plug mono into it, sound comes out both outputs. So it basically ah. automatically switches so that uh, if, you know, if you're using a mono instrument with it, you don't have one, one output channel drop out. So you can leave it connected oh. in stereo. Um, so that, and like I said, it's the traditional organ grinder sound um, in stereo. So that those are the main things. Some of the other differences are in the mono pedal that you have which I'm probably not going to put that out there because I've had a couple okay. of people tell me they didn't like how it sounded. And uh, Well, and it, it's, uh, it, it takes it takes all sorts, doesn't it, I guess. But, yeah. uh, and when I listened to it, I didn't like the sound of it as well either. You know? and so, right. Well, I've, I had the one before that. I had yeah. the, the one and, and the modded one. And the modded one, it, it works for me, I think, because I play in a variety of bands with different sounds. So mm -hmm. it gives me a bit more flexibility up the, up the, the gritty end. It is um, it is grittier, and I think that's what some of the people didn't like was that it was not as smooth as the organ grinder. Now I can well, make those on demand for anybody who asks, you know. Uh, and and it's amazing. And you're saying that you you make all of all of the Lounsby pedals yourself. All of them, yeah. So my wife was up here soldering for me for a little while, but she she hasn't been doing it of late. And uh, yeah, everything's done here up in up, up in the the attic of my <laughs> my love <laughs> farmhouse. <laughs> I think that's I think that's fantastic. I mean, certainly around the the UK circuit, and I I I, I meet up. You know, all organ players know all organ players, don't they? And and yeah, in the much. UK, they cer they certainly do. And I know of quite a few people we've chatted, and they've gone straight out and bought the organ grinder, and it's there in their rig, and it's ne it's never disengaged. You know, so uh, I've never never heard a bad word said about it, and and that's unique, really. I mean, even if you go to uh, some some other brand of guitar pedal. You'll always hear someone say, "Oh, I don't like that one," or "I prefer this," or whatever. And I've never heard anyone go, "No, I don't like that." You know, and that, that's quite that's, that's quite uh, something. That's a good testimonial. I had never thought of that, but you're right. You know, there's always somebody who doesn't like any given pedal. You know, so yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, so, it's, so it's a all, all. Thank you. Well, it's an all-encompassing bit of kit, I guess. So that's that's really good. Is there, is, there, is, there, is there anything else that you you're you're working on at the minute that you'd like to tell us about before we before we draw to a close? I, I have some some things you know for the for the more distant future. I'm probably going to hold close to the vest for now. And uh, yeah, but uh, the stereo the stereo organ grinder known as Gear Grinder will be getting its you know official release quite soon. Oh, uh, Mo ba Mo bass for bass pedal bass players. Um, so. Uh, you know, I've I've passed those out to a few people, Tim Lefebvre and people like that who've really liked it. And so, um, yeah. So that's that's, that's the that's thing, incredible. right? Incredible. Yeah. So if um, if people want to get in touch with you or whatever, how can they do that? The easy way is to go to LounsburyPedals dot com and use the uh, contact form. And that's my personal email. It actually comes to me right on my phone. I can. Oh, brilliant! I think you did that. And your your family set the website up, didn't they? Um. I had a an ad agency set up the website because the one I had wow. prior to this just didn't look that good. And so, uh, but my son is the webmaster, so he's the one who maintains the website. That's he is a uh, he's a, a networking engineer and he works in the defense industry, and so he's takes a little bit of his spare time and helps me with this. Well, that's fantastic. Well, well, Greg, thanks ever so much for talking to me. I really do appreciate it. Thank you. It's good talking to you. So that was uh, Greg Lounsby. What did you think? Uh, really interesting guy, I thought. Really good talker, which made my life very easy. I'm no, I'm not a professional interviewer, so if anyone can uh, talk with with clarity like like he did, then I just get I just sit and listen. And I I got a bit lost it halfway through because um, I was just listening to the words and we were just having a great chat. And then I realised I was supposed to ask a few questions that I'd thought up during the day, and I didn't. There was no need. It was very. Um, a very organic conversation and uh, one that I really enjoyed. Uh, we're going to meet up again uh, in the future. So if you do have any questions for him, obviously 
you can get him on his own website and he did say what those what the links were there but if you want to ask me any questions if you want me to interpret any of your questions uh, from a from a dirty organ player point of view i'm very happy to do that as well so i hope you enjoyed that if you want more do let me know um if you have any people that you think i should be chatting to quite happy to have a word with them if they'll speak to me i'll speak to them as i always say um I'll see you next time. Uh, please like and subscribe. Tell your friends uh, this has been a good one. Thanks very much. Bye.